Good morning. Uh, before anything else, uh, let me just show you the film uh, so that uh, you have a better idea of uh, what I'm going to talk about, okay? So here is a film that I produced, Happy. What do you want out of life? I don't know. To be happy? To be happy. I want the American dream. I want to be happy. The professor said to me, you can never measure happiness. Now, why they thought you could measure depression, which they were all doing, but you couldn't measure happiness, I'm not sure. This is a paradise to me. That's why I love it so much. And then you don't know what you're gonna see. When I was run over by a truck, my whole life changed. There is a great deal you can do on a regular basis to become happier. The uh, executive producer of Happy is a very uh, successful uh, movie director of Hollywood. One day, he was reading uh, a newspaper at a cafe in Beverly Hills, where he used to live. And one of the articles uh, in that particular issue said that the happiest country is Bangladesh. Then he scratched his head and then uh, wondered, I have achieved my childhood dream and got to where I am today in Hollywood. Surrounded by the richest, uh, most powerful, and possibly most beautiful people on earth. But nobody seemed happy. Or maybe uh, very happy. Then uh, uh, they are, you know, uh, feisty, bitter, and uh, always complaining. And then he thought that if uh, beauty, money, and power don't, us, uh, don't make us happy, then what does? With that question, uh, he commissioned us to make a film about happiness. I left my corporate life uh, in Tokyo and joined this uh, quest for happiness five years ago. We, I mean, we means uh, my uh, best friend, who is a filmmaker, uh, the director of this film, and I have uh, interviewed the, uh, the world experts in uh, psychology, neuroscience, spirituality, philosophy, and education on the subject of happiness. We also have traveled around the world, uh, visiting the different uh, countries to document different kinds of happiness in different uh, parts of the world. And also, I personally got very interested in learning how to improve my happiness, so I tried the, uh, some of the uh, uh, intervention, happiness in, uh, boosting interventions uh, on myself. And uh, some of the things that I did was that somebody said that the meditation is good, so I went to the Himalayas and then I spent one month in a monastery learning all the different kinds of meditation. Somebody said that the uh, volunteer work is good. So I went to Galau Canal and then I dig uh, some landmines. So I did some crazy stuff to make myself happy. And, I, uh, be and also, aside from that, I uh, learned the uh, uh, positive psychology. And uh, uh, as some of may, uh, you may know, positive psychology is a new field of science uh, that studies uh, happiness and well-being. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, traditional psychology uh, tried to make unhappy people normal, whereas the uh, positive psychology uh, makes normal people flourish. And uh, uh, I was fascinated with the idea, and uh, one theory says that the uh, Discovering uh, one's own strengths, uh, use it on a daily basis, and then uh, enhance it, and uh, working for the uh, bigger causes, that would uh, uh, make people happy because they feel the uh, meaning uh, in their life. And I was thinking, if it works for the individual, maybe it could work for a country. So I studied about you know, uh, what's going on in Japan, and the uh, Japanese uh, signature strengths, as you know, are hardworking, uh, responsible, cooperative, humble, serious, and detail-oriented. And certainly, 
these uh, strengths made us uh, where we are in the world today. We made unprecedented uh, economic uh, advancement, and uh, we are always ahead of the curve in terms of technology, economy, and innovation. But that was uh, a couple of decades ago, and I'm wondering how happiness is doing for Japan today. And happiness in Japan today, uh, some argue that the, uh, Japan is the least happy country in the, uh, you know, the, uh, the industrialized uh, nations today. And we are the, happiness, uh, the 90th happiest country in, according to some of the index. We have 30,000 uh, suicides every year. If you think about how many people lost their lives in three, uh, at the 311, this number actually exceeds 27,000 uh, deaths in tsunami. Also, uh, we are experiencing two lost decades of uh, economic growth. And uh, while uh, we may be losing our confidence as uh, China and other emerging countries are surpassing us uh, in uh, lots of aspects, then we have a problem and uh, what shall we do? And uh, I was wondering, uh, you know, if I can remind you of something that uh, we already learned at high school or uh, junior high in the history class. In the 14th century, at the height of prosperity, the Ashikaga uh, dynasty built uh, this gold, golden pavilion, which is made of pure gold. And uh, uh, this was a symbol of, uh, symbol of uh, uh, their prosperity, affluence, material, material progress, and power. Then uh, one day, uh, with the option to build more, the bigger and the flasher golden pavilion, one of the uh, shoguns and his friend maybe uh, start asking themselves, and uh, this kind of obsessed pursuit of progress is making them any happier, their culture any richer. Instead of adding and expanding, they realize that uh, less can be more, and they started subtracting and simplifying things. And uh, because of this intentional regress to progress, we have made our culture so rich. And you can see some of the things uh, that uh, on the screen uh, value the, the principle of the less can be more. So maybe our strength, uh, aside from hard workingness and, and uh, um, you know, other uh, great qualities, our strength is our sensibility that made this holistic uh, way of thinking possible. Another quick example, and I'm running out of time, so I'll just go quick. I mean, actually, I don't have to explain much. These two images, Western Garden and Japanese Garden, shows our view towards nature. We feel that we are part of the nature instead of uh, dominating the nature, and uh, these uh, uh, gardens exemplify that example. Today, uh, the Earth is uh, facing the uh, serious climate uh, crisis. More and more countries are seeking greater economic growth. It is funny, after traveling around the world, I noticed that the, uh, everywhere you go, you kind of see the same scenery. Big as, oh, sorry, big as uh, 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 like insanely um, air-conditioned uh, building, stuff with the same kind of uh, brand of clothing and a uh, you know, coffee shop and ATM machine. And uh, this blind, I would say, the march towards the uh, uh, progress uh, uh, that are based on the uh, destruction, temptation, and consumption may not bring uh, much happiness because Japan has been there. As a country that has uh, had achieved its fair share of uh, uh, progress, uh, Japan has different role to play, or maybe something else to say. Maybe uh, using uh, our uh, very unique sensibility, we can uh, tell the world that they, uh, it is possible to make uh, a lifestyle 
or a new approach to progress that is um, deeper, greener, more holistic, and happier because our ancestor had done it. It's actually said that the uh, theme of the uh, TEDx uh, Tokyo this, uh, this year is enter the unknown. Actually, we are not entering the unknown. We, are, we should be uh, enter the forgotten. And that, I think, is the next phase of Japan's evolution. Thank you.